praise the Lord and welcome to the Spirit of Truth once again. And uh, we're teaching on the Tabernacle, Typology 101, and this message is number 13. It's the highlight of on the Ark of the Covenant, the Mercy Seat, and the Cherubim. So let's take a look at the uh, where we are. Remember, we started with a cloud of glory that led Israel out of wilderness, out of Egypt. And that cloud is a type of the Holy Spirit leading us on our way to heaven, uh, uh, to our promised land. The gate on which the guilty Israelite entered into to receive salvation was Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And he is the straight gate, the Bible says in Matthew. Then we, t we, we, we consider the lamb for sacrifice. And John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. He said this when he saw Jesus. And then the blood that was shed on the altar, the altar is a type of the cross, uh, the altar on the, on the mound, the, the elevated ground it stood on is a type of Golgotha's hill. And uh, the blood that was shed, Jesus said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The curtain door, which we didn't consider yet, is the door of the church. We need to enter in to serve the table of showbread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The golden altar in front of the veil, Jesus said, is making intercession for us right now, Hebrews 7.25. And then the candlestick is Jesus is the light of the world. And then we saw we enter into the presence of God through the flesh, the blood of Jesus. And here we now are now at the ark. And uh, to highlight that ark, the visual illustration is the ark of the covenant. The type, Jesus is the divine Son of God. It's applied to us, the believer. We are partakers of his divine nature through faith in his blood, 2 Peter 1, 4. We, have received, we are to receive his divine nature. John 3, verse 5, 6. Chapter 5, verse 24. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And then our responsibility is live under his everlasting blood covenant by faith in his blood. Okay, here we are. The ark speaks of the person of Jesus. The ark was made of gold, wood overlaid with gold. The gold speaks of Jesus, the perfect God, and that he is. And the wood speaks of Jesus, the perfect man, and that he is. And the Bible says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and a government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Colossians 1, 15. And praise God if you, can, if you can receive that, if that's been revealed to you, because many in this world have not, are not able to receive that because they're not saved. Now, let's take a look here at the ark. You know, Moses saw only part of the glory of God, and, and when he did, his face had it shined so bright that he had to wear a veil over his face when he came before the congregation of the people. Isn't that something? But you know, Jesus is the Shekinah glory in John 17, 5. He dwells in us now by the power of his Holy Spirit, and we have full access to God's glory through him. Moses only has half his glory. Can you think about that? You know, uh, the ark was made of Shedem wood overlaid with gold, as I said, within and without. And uh, the pure gold speaks of the divine nature of Christ. But I want you to notice that, uh, that the wood speaks of his perfect human body. Jesus was perfect. And uh, only the gold on the ark was visible to the eye. Yet many people today only see the human nature, not his divine nature. Uh, Born-again believers see his divine nature, 
the world talks about Jesus as a man, as a philosopher, or 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 a rabbi, or a great teacher. Uh, that's what the world sees, and many people in the church sees Jesus as uh, as the same. They see Jesus the same way. They do. They really do. But we who are saved and are partakers of His divine nature. When we see, you know, we see his divine nature, and when we see him face to face, we're going to be like him, for we're going to be like him. We're going to see him as he is. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, Romans 8, 29 and 30, Colossians 1, 15 through 22. People today, and it's sad to say, so many, many in the church do not see the divine nature. They don't see the God in Christ. And that's sad. That's very, very sad. The rings that they're unending, they speak of, the, of us moving closer and closer to the fullness of God. Our revelation of Christ and his victory, his mercy, his lordship and truth of the ark and the Holy of Holies are never, they're forever increasing in our life. They are. I mean, the more we study, uh, the the uh, the word of God, the more the revelation of the the holiness and the godness of Christ we can see, uh, and the more we read, the deeper we go, the more we get blessed, and this is why we need the, to read and to study God's word. Uh, just as uh, one writer said, uh, there are so many miracles that are not even recorded in the Bible that Jesus did. He says, if we could write the books that should be written, the world itself could not contain the, the miracles and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Well, that holds true. The more we study, we, we can, the, the Holy Spirit will reveal things to us that will just keep us spellbound. But the church won't do it. How do I know they won't do it? Because the door is closed. You think just because you got a little Christian school in there, you're learning something? Think about what I'm saying. So, you know, you know, I need to cry out at every program that, that, that these preachers that are backslidden, that shut down the church, that close off God from the, from the city. You deserve what you get if we reveal God's word. You know, a lot of people think that if you don't talk about evil, it goes away. What well, does it? Look around the country. Look around the church. Look around the church. Hey, my brother-in-law, he come up there and he says, you know what the preacher said today? He said, uh, uh, he says, uh, I asked him, I says, uh, if people were just shacked up living common law, would you bar them from the church? And he says, uh, yes, I would. And he told me that. He says, that's what the preacher said. I said, get out of my face. I don't want to be bothered with you. He said, what, what kind of attitude is that? I said, this is the attitude. He, more, almost half the church is living common law. Why didn't they clear it out, man? What, what do you expect him to say? He's a hypocrite. They're under the influence of the devil. They will do anything they can do to keep people coming into that church for the money. That's what it's all about. It's all about the money. What did Jesus say? He said, uh, the only reason why you come to me is for the miracles and the food. That's what Jesus said. All right, I'm getting off the subject. There were two staves, and they were not taken from the rings of the ark. They speak to us that we carry the truth of God's word to this world. To carry this divine person to this world. And the rings and the staves together, what do they, what do they speak of? To declare that Jesus is divine, the fullness of God and the basis of, the, of, of, our, of his truth. You know, if you think I'm just talking off the top of my head... I had a preacher call me, another preacher call me, he says, you know, are your stats that you give, you really believe they, they are true stats? I mean, uh, stats don't lie, but liars make stats. I said, well, if you're calling me a liar, you're not going to shake me up. But if you're a wise man, all you have to do is at some point ask each member in your church if they believe the five simple bases of beliefs, you know what they are. 
He stuttered for a while. I said, do you even know what they are? God is the author of the Bible. He, pinned, he wrote it. And a bunch of men led by the Holy Spirit, filled by the Holy Spirit, penned that word. Uh, let's see, the incarnation. God made flesh. Jesus is not only the Son of God, he is God in spirits. The virgin birth. Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Four, the blood atonement. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And five, the resurrection. Now, before you say anything else to me about this subject, you go and ask each individual if they believe those five simple bases of beliefs of the Christian faith. And if you want to talk to me, fine. If you don't, that's all right. But you're going to be shocked when you, when you come back with the answer. Shocked when you come back with the answer. To the people I'm talking to, do you believe these five simple bases? Basic teaching to Christianity? Now, the, the ark was located in the presence of God. It was placed in the Holy of Holies behind the veil on the west end of the tabernacle proper. Now, God is located within the flesh of Christ. Are we in his presence? Do we even believe that? I believe it. I believe it. Do you believe it? Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Jesus is located in the presence of God, John 1, 18. So all we have to do is find Jesus and uh, we're in the presence of God. Isn't it a simple gospel? Uh, the ark had a crown of gold round about it. Three pieces of furniture were crowned with gold in the tabernacle. It was the ark, the golden altar, and the table of showbread. And a crown speaks of the kingship of Christ. The Ark of the Covenant contained God's law. That was the purpose of the Ark. Because the Ark was made to ha uh, for the law. It was made to house the law. God had a blood covenant with the nation of Israel. Blood applied speaks of the blood of Jesus is the blood of the everlasting covenant. Now in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The Israelites inquired of the Lord before the ark. And we inquire of the Lord through Jesus Christ as we are led and directed by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the Israelites were protected by the ark as long as they kept God's commandments. Because we keep God's word, we live the Christ-like life in holiness. When we ask of him, we receive. God protects us from our enemies and from the evil one, as long as we continue to serve him. How many times do we say it? If you want, if you want, uh, if we stop sinning, or should I say, when we stop sinning, we get holy. When we get holy, we get power. And when we get power, we get answered prayer. There's no shortcuts, is there? No shortcuts. The contents of the ark were two tables of the law, a golden pot of manna, and Aaron's rod that budded. These were the contents. And the, con the contents are typical of the law. The two tables of the law. The Father is the great lawgiver. The golden pot of manna. Jesus the Son is the bread of life. 
Do you remember in the table of showbread, the bread of life, and then uh, the uh, manna is uh, spiritual food? Think on that. And then the rod that budded. It, it, it had to do with the shooting of the priest, but, but the Holy Spirit bears witness, bearing fruit in our life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Okay, it speaks of resurrection too. So, I mean, I can go on and on with this, uh, uh, with the contents. You know, when you look at the law, as we said before, Jesus, uh, God uh, wrote his commandments on stone. Carry him around and read him every once in a while. Because Moses came down off the mountain with, 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 with stone tablets. So you got to read it. But now Jesus writes God's law, commandments on our hearts. We don't have to have a good memory to keep the commandments, the two great commandments that Jesus gave us, to love God and love our neighbor as ourselves, do we? So let's consider the typology of the tabernacle and relate everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. If we look at each uh, item separately in that ark, for example, the tables of the law, the covenant in Hebrews 9, 4, Israel had four aspects of the law. They had moral law, they had civil law, they had ceremonial laws, and they had the health law. Jesus kept them all. How about that? How many hundreds combined laws did Jesus keep? He kept them all. Now, people don't really know who this Jesus is in, in the church today. They have no depth at the perfection of this man. No, they don't have, they, they just, if they do, they're not talking about it. They're not talking about it. Now, again, Hebrews 9, 4, let's look at it from a little bit different, meaning the same thing. The golden pot of manna in Hebrews 9, 4. Jesus is our bread from heaven, bread of life, life-sustaining. True manna is spiritual food. It's life-giving. It's complete provision supernatural supply, and all sufficient from the Lord. You know, again, let's look, let's look again. Now, in the, in the holy place, the um, table showbread uh, gives life. When we receive Christ, the bread of life, he gives us life. The manna in the holy of holies sustains that life. So we study God's word and eat the bread that came down from heaven and we sustain it daily by continually studying on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we have to do. So why don't people study the, the law, uh, excuse me, study uh, the typology of the tabernacle? Because it is revealing. It's revealing and it, 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 it is so simple. Uh, it, put, it, it puts everything in line. It makes everything real. It gives all truth. And it certainly has a lot of common sense. I have a brother-in-law. I go back uh, 50 years. 50 years. And he said, I wanted to teach on the tabernacle because I was going to the Bible school in Detroit. And I you know, said to the church, I want to teach on uh, the, ta the typology 101. And they said, uh, well, not that this time, wait on the Lord. And my brother-in-law kept saying, well, pray and wait on the Lord. And I saw him here last year. He came down to Tennessee. And I said, well, well, brother, uh, let me ask you a question. Are you still waiting on the Lord? And he just kind of surprised, look. I said, yeah, you wanted to teach on the tabernacle nearly 50 years ago. Are you still waiting on the Lord? You know what the Lord has accomplished? I got out of that. I got out of there. Church is not going to control me. Jesus controls me. He tells me what to do. And um, the Lord has done extraordinary things through the teaching of this tabernacle. 
He never did answer me. He never did. You know, when I went, when I was, uh, uh, I think, 22 years old, I, I would walk into this church. Uh, it was Assembly of God Church, and uh, there was a preacher from, uh, from uh, Clarksburg, West Virginia, who had went up to uh, Mount Clemens, Michigan. He got, had this church. And um, I would go to church on Sunday, and one Sunday he came up to me and he said, you know what, he said, you're dead weight in this church. I mean, what good are you? He said that to me. I said, what do you mean, what good am I? He says, when I was your age, I was, we were poor. He said, we didn't have no money, and I couldn't go to Bible school. But you can get out of my church and go to Bible school. And I got up and walked out of that church. And I praise God for that man. You don't know what a real Bible school is till you've been in one. And I walked into this uh, Bible school, and they, they had quite a few classes. And I didn't know what to do. I said, well, the pastor said to come over here and uh, go to this school. I don't know what to do. And the dean of the Bible college said, go down in room 101. They're teaching typology 101. I walked into that class. And here come the professor and this man. I've never ever seen or heard a man teach the gospel like this man. I mean, it was amazing. He had me spellbound for one hour and 45 minutes. That whole class, I couldn't move. It, I was just amazed at the, at the in-depth and the spiritual revelation that, that God had given this man. And that was it for me. I said, wow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this course out. And I did. It was like thir the first part was 13 weeks. But I noticed every day, that I, every week rather, that I went, the class was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It, it, uh, they started with 39, and the class kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And this, they weren't able to grasp what this man was, was teaching. I mean, the... It, he was spiritual all the way. And the people that were in this class, they weren't just kids like me. They were teachers, uh, preachers that had churches and pastors, and they kept leaving. They kept saying, we don't understand what this man is saying. And I said to myself, my goodness, what is this? But along about the 12th week, I, I, the Lord revealed it to me. He says, he says, what good is it? Now, he was not putting this man down. This man was a preacher to the preachers. That's what he was. I'm serious, that's how blessed this man was. His name was Lee, I think he went on to be with the Lord. And uh, the Lord said, what good is it if you have all this knowledge, the spiritual depth, and the people that you are talking to cannot receive it? And from that time on, I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to study this word until I can make it so simple that there's no way possible that you can misunderstand typology and the great mystery of redemption, typical truth throughout the Bible. And I worked towards that end, and the Lord, and the Lord gave me the, the wisdom to teach this. I guarantee you, if you have this Bible study in your, uh, in your church or your Bible study group, there's no way possible you cannot misunderstand the great plan of redemption and the deep truths and the tremendous care that God took to bring, to bring uh, the plan of salvation and redemption to pass. I guarantee you, I won't be teaching anything new. I will be saying this to you, that with the knowledge you, other, you already have, I'm talking to the people that are saved and going to church, with the knowledge that you already have and what the Holy Spirit will reveal to you, it will keep you spellbound because you're going to hear from the Holy Spirit the magnificent things of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you the truth. You have to see it. You have to see it. When I went on uh, websites, they got two. See, I couldn't get into churches anywhere. People don't want this because it's so revealing. It's so simple. Uh, it, it it gives you the the teaching of staying power. The way they teach today, you got to keep going back every week just to understand what they're saying every week. You don't have to do that with typology. 
once you grasp the, the meaning of a type, once you truly get that meaning, it's you and it's Jesus and you all the way from that point on right there. You'll come to church and you'll add to the church. You won't come to get, you'll come to give. I'm telling you the truth. I know what I'm talking about. And let me say this, that if you are called into the ministry and if you are called to be a teacher, you need, you absolutely need Typology 101. Now, if you don't believe I'm telling you the truth, all you got to do is send for the free chart. I'll send it to you. I will never, I will never follow up. I don't do that. I don't, I don't chase people for Jesus. I don't beg for money, and I don't chase people. Uh, God says begging brings a reproach to him. And God said, I brought you out of Egypt. I'm a jealous God, and I'll take care of you. You know, God called me out of this world. And he says, and I'm going to take care of you. So don't you go back to the world for help. You need help, you come to me. If you want to pay the price, I'll give you all the help that you need. And I'm telling you, I'm not, I, I'm making this, I'm putting this before you. Test it, what I'm saying. You need the full, complete, easy plan of redemption. And if you never did in-depth uh, Bible study or you never been to a Bible school, you don't have it. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm saying you have the message of salvation, you know. Because uh, the Bible says, uh, I know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. But to know of that man that was crucified and to know the in-depth of, of, of how God took care, special care, and to know what Jesus went through in-depth, it'll amaze you. So if you need the Bible study taught in your church or Bible study group, give me a call at area code... 865-200-1805. And Lord willing, we'll be with you again next week. And next week, we're going to be talking about the tabernacle proper, the church body itself. Praise the Lord.